Welcome to your Spend a Day Rental. We're so happy that you have chosen to spend your recreational time with us on the water. My name is Monica and I'm going to do a brief orientation on how to use your rental boat for the day or the week or by the hour, whichever reservation that you have. Come on aboard. When you lift up on the gates, please make sure that you are lifting up on the hinge side as that will make the gate easier to open. I'm going to show you where all of your safety gear is located. Underneath one of the front two seats, you're going to have two fenders and an anchor. When you anchor the boat, please make sure that you are securing the anchor to one of the cleats. There's four cleats on the boat, two on the bow and two on the stern. Please make sure it's tied up prior to you throwing the anchor out. The fenders are to be used when you're docking at another location to protect the sides of the boats. Back here, you're going to find however many life jackets that you need, which is however many people that you have on board. If you have infants or you're going to be tubing or skiing, we will fit to each person with a, um, a regular ski vest versus one of the orange AK-1 vests. But in this bag, we have seven adult AK-1 vests, a throw cushion, and a distress flag. Keep in mind that this is all safety equipment, so it should only be utilized in case of an emergency or if someone on the boat wants to just wear a regular life vest, not to be played with in the water if you're at one of the swimming holes. We're gonna put this back down. The boat is also equipped with four dock lines. We have one on each cleat. Please make sure before you travel that all of the dock lines are safely secured inside of the boat so they don't get caught in the prop of the engine. The other thing with the dock lines, I'll show you on the front seat. If you happen to secure one of the dock lines in the front seat, make sure you're not just pulling it out when you need to access it. Please lift the seat and remove the line. If you fail to do that, it can cause a rope burn on the vinyl and that is something that you would be charged for to repair. Now let's go ahead and move over to the helm. This is where we'll show you how to start the boat. You have a kill switch, which fits up underneath the key switch. We'll get you a close up of that. that that's the kill switch. And then you've got the key, key fits in the key switch right here. Make sure your throttle is in neutral. So you're gonna shimmy the throttle. You'll feel that it locks into position right here in the center part. And then you're going to ensure that the engine is in the down position. And then you can turn the key and the engine should start right up. You'll hear that beeping noise, that is normal. When you go ahead and are ready to shift the boat into forward, you're going to have two forward positions. The first forward position is idle forward. When you do that, you're going to push the throttle forward and you'll feel it lock into that position. That's just if you're going slow in any no wake zones or any other marked areas. As you push the throttle forward, you will accelerate. When you bring it back down from your acceleration point to neutral, you'll kind of hit this idle position and then back to neutral. Neutral is in the center. When you go in reverse, you're gonna have the same two positions. So you're gonna have idle reverse, again, that slow reverse. You'll feel the, the throttle click in right there. And the further down you go, the faster you go in reverse. And then if you want to stop, you're going to bring it back into neutral. Please keep in mind that boats do not have a brake. So it's all about controlling your forward momentum versus your reverse momentum. So sometimes you have to change in between forward, neutral, and reverse to get yourself going at a speed that you're comfortable, especially when you come into a dock. At the helm, you have a horn right here. And then we have docking lights and live well. Unless you're going to be out for a week, you don't need to worry about those. And then this accessory switch is not hooked up to anything. Navigation and anchor light is a double rocker switch. So forward is going to be your front red and green lights on the bow and your stern light on top of the bimini. That's if you are boating from dusk to dawn. Middle is off. So make sure at night, uh, if you are boating at night, that the middle um, of this switch is in the off position so you don't run the battery down. 
and then down is just your stern light. So if you're anchored at night fishing or something, you just need to have the, this light on. I do recommend if you are doing that, keep the both the front red and green and your stern light on so other boaters can see you. A little bit easier. This accessory switch is gonna power up your stereo. To turn the stereo on, if it doesn't automatically come on, you just hit the source button. See, we have volume. And then if you hit the source button, that's gonna take you through to your AM or your Bluetooth where you can link to your phone. You can also input a USB on our auxiliary and that will play through the stereo as well. Please make sure you turn this accessory switch off at the end of every night, again, to avoid running the battery down. On your gauges, you have the trim. Trim is going to show you where your engine is in the water. Most of the time, I recommend running the trim between down and a quarter of the way up. So in that range, between down and a quarter of the way up is where you're going to be running it most of the time. If you are in a known shallow area, you're going slow, there is no problem with taking it up to about the halfway point as well. If you go any higher than that, you run the risk of putting the prop out of the water and burning up the impeller. So please keep, be aware of where your trim is. Again, that is a function of this little button right where your thumb naturally rests. So you wanna make sure that when you're shifting, your thumb is in a position right below or behind that button. Back to your dash panel. You've got the tachometer in the center. That's gonna tell you how many RPMs the engine is turning. This should be about 6,000, 5,500 to 6,000 RPMs at full throttle, just so you know. And then the digital readout right here is how many hours are on the boat. And then we always send you out with a full tank of fuel. And then you are responsible for however much fuel you use. When you come back, you're going to either bring it back to behind the rental building or to the gas dock, whatever is the most convenient at the time of your return. Um, the steering wheel also adjusts. You can push this down and it'll go up and down for your comfort level. The seat has a slider. So down on your right hand side, you can slide the seat back and forth. It also have a, has a swivel on your left hand side. You also have a recline. So if you're just hanging out on the lake and you wanna take a little break, you can recline the seat. Please make sure that you aren't putting all of your pressure or all of your body weight on the armrest arm rest to, to move. Go ahead and pull these armrests up and then get up from the helm seat. One other safety feature that is by the helm is, wait for that truck to pass. One other safety feature you'll find is your fire extinguisher is down here mounted on the floor. Many times our rental customers want to get a little bit of shade while they're out in the lake as well. So we have the Bimini tops for you to use. In order to do that, it is a very simple procedure, but we will go through that right now. First thing you're going to do is unzip the boot. I'm going to pull the Velcro off right here, and then you're just going to unzip the boot all the way. and pull forward. That way the boot doesn't get caught on the stern light, which is right on top of your bimini top. Make sure this gets stowed under one of the seats so you don't have to worry about it blowing away. I'm just gonna lift up the back compartment and put that under here for right now. The next thing you're gonna do is just push it forward, it accordions forward. You got 10 foot of shade and then to secure it, we're gonna pull these arms out and clip them into position on both sides. Just like that. So now you have shade. When you put the bimini back, it's just as easy. We're gonna pop these arms out. And then the whole bimini is just gonna accordion back one bow at a time. Again, being sure I'm gonna to have to step on the seats in order to do this. Now, if you are going under any bridges, you will not be able to go under the bridge with the bimini in this position, so you're gonna to have to put it down. In order to do that, you're gonna pop out these little back legs, secure the frame of the bimini, 
pop out the back legs and then it's going to go down and you secure the shorter legs so that way the bimini is yay high. All right. Some other things that are important as you go through your rental with us are knowing the rules of the water and what you can do out here. When you are coming head on with a boat, it's important that you realize you need to go to the right and the other boater should go to the right as well. If you are coming at a 90 degree angle, just like you do uh, on the road, the person to the right has the right of way. So those are just some general rules of the water and um, boater courtesy to know. When you are out here on Indian Lake, we have some no wake zones. The no wake zones are 300 feet away from the shoreline or any other marked areas. We have a couple buoys out there and we'll direct you to uh, point those out and you cannot go fast until you get past those buoys. If you find yourself close to a shoreline and you don't see any buoys, remember it's 300 feet away. You have to go slow, which is that idle speed that I showed you on the throttle. If you want to go swimming, there are designated swim areas, which we will show you on the map when you come in here. You cannot just swim in the open water. There are designated areas for that. There's also designated areas for skiing and tubing. If you are planning on doing that with us, we're going to also direct you on where those are. So you're going to go out of our bay and then you are going to keep the shoreline on your left and you're gonna go all the way around until you're on the other side of the lake. That area is marked with buoys that say open zone and that is where you can legally tube and ski. There is no smoking on any of our boats and we do appreciate you following those rules. Also, there is nobody permitted to ride on the bow while the boat is in motion, which is this front part in front of the gate. You cannot ride on that. No one is allowed on the back deck while the boat is in motion, which is this area right back here. This is only for if you're stopped and swimming, you can jump off of here, but make sure your engine is turned off uh, no, and nobody is riding back here while you're underway. You can also not sit on top of the seats while the boat's in motion. So please make sure all of your passengers are safely seated in a seat while you are underway. I believe that takes care of a brief overview of what your rental boat is going to look like and what your rental experience is going to look like with us. We appreciate your business and we look forward to having you uh, enjoy the lake and we'll talk to you soon.